Good day, everyone. Welcome to our TLE 7, Quarter 3, Week 4. The fundamentals of food preparation and service. And the learning competencies are. First, discuss the fundamentals of food preparation and service. Second, recognize the seven principles of HACCP in food preparation and service. And the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students are expected to. 1. Discuss the proper way of food preparation and service. 2. Discuss the seven principles of HACCP and give an example of each. 3. Apply hazard analysis techniques to a practical scenario, identifying and prioritizing potential hazards in a controlled food preparation setting. 4. Express an appreciation for HACCP significance in ensuring food safety and quality, recognizing its impact on public health. Fundamentals of Food Preparation and Service Food preparation and service are crucial parts of the hospitality industry, requiring a mix of skills and techniques. Food preparation involves selecting high-quality ingredients and cooking them in ways that enhance flavor and presentation. Chefs use various methods like chopping, grilling, and baking to create dishes that are both delicious and visually appealing. Presentation also plays an important role in making the food look inviting. On the other hand, food service focuses on providing excellent customer care. This includes greeting customers, taking their orders, serving food, and ensuring their dining area is clean and comfortable. Servers answer questions about the menu and work to create a welcoming experience. Together, food preparation and service contribute to a memorable dining experience. When chefs and servers collaborate effectively, they can create meals and experiences that customers will enjoy and want to return for. Types of food service operations Food service operations fall into two categories. Commercial food service operations, these businesses like restaurants, hotels, and fast food chains focus on making a profit from selling food. Non-commercial food service operations found in schools, government offices, or hospitals, these operations serve food mainly to support employees or residents, often without aiming to make a profit. Importance of food safety. Food safety protects a business's reputation, ensures customer health, and upholds moral responsibility. Lapses in food safety, such as improper storage or handling, can lead to contamination and harm. Common errors include storing food at unsafe temperatures, undercooking, and poor personal hygiene among food handlers. To reduce these risks, the WHO's 10 Golden Rules offer helpful advice, such as cooking food thoroughly, washing hands often, and keeping raw and cooked food separate. Kitchen Layouts and Design A well-planned kitchen is both functional and visually appealing. Key factors in a good layout include proper placement of the sink, stove, and storage areas, enough space for food preparation and free movement, a layout that simplifies cooking tasks. Popular kitchen layouts include single line layout, all appliances and counters align along one wall, galley layout, two parallel rows for efficient workflow, L-shape layout, two connected walls or counters keep the kitchen free from outside traffic, U-shape layout, three walls or counters maximize space, G-shape layout, adds extra workspace to the U-shape design, island layout, a standalone counter in the center provides additional workspace and serves as a focal point. Good day everyone. Welcome to our day two of our TLE 7, quarter three, week four. Learning competency. Discuss the seven principles of HACCP and give an example of each. The seven principles of hazard analysis critical control point or HACCP. A food safety management system is a group of procedures and practices intended to prevent foodborne illness. It does this by actively controlling risks and hazards throughout the flow of food. A HACCP plan involves identifying hazards, chemical, biological, physical, at specific points during food handling and identifying how they can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to a safe level. There are seven sequential steps to developing a full HACCP plan. 1. Analyze hazards. Identifies the potential hazards associated with food and the measures to control them. The hazard could be biological, such as a microbe, chemical, such as a pesticide, or physical, such as glass or metal fragments. 2. Identify each critical control point. The point in a food's production, from its raw state through processing to consumption by the consumer, at which a potential hazard can be controlled or eliminated. Examples include receiving, preparation, cooking, and cooling. 3. Establish preventive measures with critical limits for each control point. 
An example of using cooked food might include setting the minimum cooking temperature and time required to ensure the elimination of any harmful microbes. 4. Establish procedures to monitor each critical control point. Such procedures might include determining how and by whom cooking time and temperatures should be monitored. 5. Establish corrective actions to be taken when monitoring shows that a critical limit has not been met. For example, reprocessing or disposing of food if the minimum cooking temperature is not met. 6. Establish procedures to verify that the system is working properly. For example, testing time and temperature recording devices to verify that a cooking unit is working properly. 7. Establish effective record keeping to document the HACCP system. This would include records of hazards and their control methods, the monitoring of each critical control point, and the action taken to correct potential problems. When is HACCP required? Food service establishments are not required to use HACCP unless they First, smoke or cure meat for preservation purposes. Second, use food additives to preserve food. Third, employ reduced oxygen packaging on site. Fourth, maintain a tank of live molluscan shellfish such as clams, oysters, mussels for consumption. Fourth, custom process meat. Fifth, package unpasteurized juice for sale without a warning label. In addition, federal legislation mandates that a HACCP plan is required for any schools that participate in the National School Lunch Program and or School Breakfast Program and that accept USDA commodity goods. Advantages of HACCP The HACCP system offers useful approaches to controlling food safety. 1. It focuses on identifying and preventing food hazards before they occur rather than reacting to them after they have caused a problem. 2. It is based on sound science. 3. HACCP places responsibility for ensuring food safety in the food service establishment. Now welcome to our day 3 of our TLE 7, quarter 3, week 4. Today, we're going to explore food safety management systems through a role-playing activity. Your task is to form groups and create scenarios showcasing a food business implementing these systems. You'll act out challenges and solutions using HACCP principles. After presenting your scenarios, we'll discuss how these principles apply to real-life kitchen situations, both professionally and at home. This exercise aims to deepen your understanding of food safety management. Let's work together, be creative, and have fun. Now, for this lesson activity, the teacher will provide each student with a copy of the learning activity sheet with a title, Fundamentals of Food Preparation and Service. You're the inspector, a safe celebratory meal for the football team activity and the food establishment inspection report form. Students will read the story and then rate the members of the sandwiches in, use the boxes to the left of each risk factor by filling in or circling the rating according to the information in the story. Y equals yes in compliance. NO equals not observed. N equals no, not in compliance. NA equals not applicable. For learners takeaways. One. Can you summarize each of the seven principles of HACCP in your own words? Two, how confident do you feel in your understanding of these principles? And for reflection on learning, consider the broader implications of HACCP in the food industry. How does a solid understanding of HACCP principles contribute to overall food safety and customer satisfaction? Now for formative assessment. Multiple choice quiz, students will take the five item test about the seven principles of HACCP. Number one, what does HACCP stand for? 
Letter A, hazard assessment and control for critical points. B, hygiene and cleaning procedures. C, hazard analysis and critical control points. D, healthy and controlled cooking practices. The correct answer is letter C, hazard analysis and critical control points. Two, which of the following is the first principle of HACCP? Letter A, establish critical limits. B, conduct a hazard analysis. C, implement corrective actions. D, monitor critical control points. The correct answer is B, conduct a hazard analysis. Three, what is the most effective way to prevent cross-contamination in a kitchen? Letter A, using the same cutting board for raw meat and vegetables. B, washing hands only before handling cooked food. C, separating raw meats from other food items. D, sharing utensils between different food items. The correct answer is letter C, separating raw meats from other food items. Four, which of the following are common errors related to food handling that can contribute to foodborne illness? Letter A, cooking food at low temperatures. B, cross-contamination between raw and cooked foods. C, reheating food thoroughly before consumption. D, storing cooked food in airtight containers. The correct answer is letter B, cross-contamination between raw and cooked foods. Five, why is food safety important in a food service establishment? A, protects the reputation of your food service establishment. B, satisfies our moral obligation to protect the lives and health of our customers. C, makes our employees proud. D, all of the above. The correct answer is letter D, all of the above. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.